السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. This is Hani Ismail from Planning Engineer website. I'm very happy to have you uh, with me in this live session. I'm going to answer some of your questions I received by email or comments. And in the meantime, if you have any question regarding planning and the scheduling, you are welcome to post it in a comment. I will read it. I will discuss it with you. The aim of this live discussion is to have some interaction and changing the information. As you may know that I like to share my knowledge and I like to uh, make planning engineers better. So let's go and start immediately. I have here some questions. Start with the first one is asking, how can a critical path cannot be the longest path? Can you give me a scenario? Thank you in advance. Okay. We have two things. We have the critical path. We have the longest path. Usually the critical path will be very same to the longest path if we don't have delays in the project. Okay. So if you are doing a baseline, you didn't update it yet, and you are in the first stage of doing your baseline, no updates, or even if you updated your baseline, but there are no delays, then the critical path and the longest path are the same thing. When we have a scenario where there are different, not the same. Okay, we have this situation when your project, let's say, delayed 10 days. So you have some activities where the total float will be minus 10 and there are some activities will be with total float with zero or let's say minus one in that case you have two paths the longest path will connect the activity with the uh, let's say maximum delays so it will be uh, the highest negative cash flow minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 so this will be the longest path but the critical path will still show any activity that the total float is less than zero so normally the longest path is uh, the activity with most delays the activity which has uh, the most delays and the critical path normally it will be more activities than the longest path I hope you got the idea that the critical path is whatever activity, total float is less than zero. The longest path is the activity with the most delays. We have here another question is asking how to find out any manipulation in the baseline, how to check, review, and comment on a submitted baseline. Okay, so we have here let's say two sections the first section is to review the time schedule as the first place okay you need to find out that the baseline is representing the project overall scope of work so you need to be sure that there are nothing is missing second thing you need to check the duration of the activities you need to check the logic of the activities then you need to check the duration and it's in, in different, uh, let's say, uh, zones, areas, floors, uh, based on the quantity. This will be the best scenario to review the uh, uh, duration based on the quantity if you have already did a cost and the resource loading. So in the cost loading, usually what we are doing, we put the quantity of each activity. So it will be easy to review it. After you did this one, then you can uh, find whether or not the critical path is logic. Sometimes we have a decent time schedule, looks fine, detailed, but the critical path is not a logical critical path. So we need to check that the critical path is logic. I, the second section or the second part of this question, I believe that if you are uh, doing the review for uh, your or the updates for your time schedule uh, as a, uh, i assume you are a client or the consultant you have to be very clear with your contractor or subcontractor that 
do not change anything in the schedule without informing me. What I mean by change anything, you should not change the duration. You should not change the relationships, leads and legs. And there is a way called clean digger in the Promovera. You can put two versions of the schedule and it will tell you the variances in the relationships, the variances in the duration, the variances in uh, leads and legs. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a short course about this one. If you would like to take it, I uh, I put it in my website. You are welcome to take it. Uh, I explained uh, how to review a time schedule in details, but it is a very short course, around two hours, uh, so you can uh, uh, fast track your process in this one. Okay, we have another question is asking, uh, can you post something about how to write a good planning engineer resume? and resume summary okay in my opinion there is no nothing called best or uh, uh, what is the format because i don't believe in this concept one size fits all i don't like it so what i'm going to do i'm going to share with you my resume i'm, I'm telling you how i'm how i did it uh, and i'll tell you how to get the format if you like it also uh, the resume is based uh, or it should be as per your uh, uh, detailed level. So if you are a senior planning engineer, it will be different than if you are uh, a junior planning engineer. The level of details matters here. So let me try to open it for you here. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. This is my resume. Uh, I made here like a summary. This summary includes your name, your title, then your education, uh, then a summary of your practical experience, okay, and your skills in terms if you have something like planning and tools, planning techniques and tools. And in the left hand, you can put some uh, personal information about how they can call you, what is your summary uh, um, experience, what is your email. And I made here some uh, a barcode to my LinkedIn profile because I believe it is important now to have a LinkedIn uh, profile summary. Uh, they can scan it and go to uh, your LinkedIn profile. And here I'm start giving my experience in the in the each company I have joined. I put the main responsibilities in the project involved. Uh, where it was, the built-up area, the project type, floors, how many floors, the project value, where it was, uh, the location, very important. And in this left section, I put here some like a summary. If someone need more details, he will read what was my experience in this company, what I did, what is my achievement. And if uh, a person like only to go for a bullet point so he can see was a project I was involved in. Here also I repeated the same like this, so it will be easy for everyone to catch what I was doing in easy way and what is my achievement, I put it here. Uh, and the last page is a personal information and some uh, motivation statement. This is what I think how a, a project manager resume could be. Uh, if you would like to have the, this template, I'm happy to share it with you. I have no problem at all. Just send me an email, okay? This is my email. Whoever would like this template, I'll send to him or her in uh, uh, Word format. Just send me an email at info at planningengineer.net if you would like to have this format, and I'll send it to you uh, accord, uh, immediately when I receive I read my emails uh, usually, let's say, uh, every one and second day. 
So don't be uh, worried if you send me one email and I didn't reply in the same day. Maybe next day I will reply to you. Okay. We have here another question. What cost uh, component should be controlled in the construction projects? Very good. What are the cost components we should take care of or we should concentrate or consider while doing a cost control? We have the materials cost, the equipment cost, the, uh, uh, what they call material, equipment, uh, manpower. These three costs called the direct cost. Okay. And then we have the indirect cost. The indirect cost will be related to the supervision, will be related to the uh, head office uh, uh, profit uh, and overhead. So these are the four costs involved in construction projects. I have also uh, created one course for the cost control. If you'd like to take it, you are welcome. By the way, sometimes, okay, I put some prices for my courses, okay, which I believe it is fair. But sometimes I see that some engineers, they feel shy to ask me, honey, give us some discount or even give it us free of charge because we cannot afford to pay. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, whoever is asking me that I cannot afford to pay the full amount of the course or I need a discount, I give it without discussion. Again, here is my email, okay? If you are interested in any of my courses and you cannot afford to pay it in full or you cannot afford to pay anything at all, don't hesitate to send me an email and I'll give it to you free of charge. Okay, so we agreed about this point. Okay, now I uh, uh, have one last question before going to your comments and see what uh, what is your questions i see a lot of questions hopefully i can answer all of them but i have here one final question from the previous comments i would like to uh, uh, answer before going to your live questions okay uh what companies or freelancing website you recommend to apply for a freelancing planning this was a comment on my freelancing how to be a freelancer in the planning field so uh, uh as I told in my video, in my previous video, you need first to build the trust with the people you are work with them right now. It means how I get my first project as a freelancer. I'm working as a freelancer now. I'm not working a full time planning engineer or planning manager. I'm working as a freelancer only right now. So how, can, how I get my first project? I get my first project simply by a recommendation from the work I uh, from the people I am working with them. They see my work; it is okay. They see that I am a cooperative person. They see that I have a very uh, less mistakes. Uh, they like my work. Then they start recommending me for their colleagues. So there are no websites or uh, a place where you can apply for a freelancing planning engineer because planning engineer is a sensitive uh, uh, is a sensitive task code uh, because uh, no one can really do a, a deep review uh, of what you did whatever you did it will be very hard very difficult for others to review so they, they need someone they can trust okay once they trusted you then they can give you the freelancing job. So to answer it in short, Hani, how we can get a job as a freelancer? First thing, do your job in your company right now perfectly, okay? Start making connections with your colleagues. Then after this one, your colleagues, your project manager, construction manager, the consultant, the client, blah, 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 will recommend you for another job. Okay, I hope this one was clear. Let me let me go for the comments and see. Okay, we have here. Hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, good evening. Uh, we have here Arabic comments. Uh, please, for Arabic comments or Arabic talking, we have another 
a channel for planning engineer bil arabi this is a channel dedicated in arabic we are talking in arabic i had a live in this channel yesterday so please go to this one and you are welcome to ask anything okay uh, good evening hello everyone uh, assalamu alaikum great to see you say it is my pleasure uh, okay hello okay basic question ask it in the interview for planning engineers this is nice question actually a few days ago i received a very nice uh, whatsapp uh, uh, message uh, one of our uh, colleagues who was doing an interview and he told me hani thank you for your uh, planning engineer interview guide because the company was reading from it and he was very smart to study it before going to the uh, interview so the simple question is is a simple answer is there is a, a, an interview guide in my website planningengineer.net go and search for it okay the planning uh, interview guide uh, it is very nice and what i can see from you guys that it seems like uh, uh, now companies are using it in the interview so it will be very good to study it if you cannot find it also send me an email and i'll send it back to you okay uh, can we see a starting activity of the project date in critical path yes of course if you have the starting activity involved in the critical path you will see it in the critical path there is no issue at all engineer is asking why in english yes because this channel is for english because there are some uh, people from around the world who don't know arabic so I have two channels, one for one Arabic and one English. This is the English channel, the Arabic channel called Planning Engineer Bill Arabi. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Ramiz, is it possible to connect B6 Cloud with Power BI? Yes. Let's, uh, let's understand what is B6, what is Power BI. B6 is working on a database, okay? So the database, they are storing the information in some form. So if you can talk to the Power BI to grab this information, it will be very easy. However, in Primavera, they don't store everything like scheduling, planned values, okay? They are not storing the planned values because planned values will vary whether you are in this data date or that data date. So when you schedule, the Primavera is calculating the planned values on a spot. That's why it takes some time to schedule your project. However, we have a better method to convert the data from Primavera with all the planned values and put it in one intermediate Excel sheet so we can use it and import it to Power BI. And I explained this in details in my, in my uh, Power BI course. So you are welcome to take it. You will get benefit from this one. I can see that now uh, the same question is asking again. I believe I answered your question already. Uh, okay. Uh, what is planning engineer task if work as a client this is very nice question okay you are working for a client and you are a planning engineer what could be your tasks first of all you need to guide okay uh, and you need to guide double line under guide don't just play the role that you are reviewing only no guide your contractor or even if you are a main contractor and you have some subcontractors guide them how to do their baseline i don't mean how to teach them to do the baseline but i mean to give them a guideline sit with their planning engineer agree about the overall wbs work breakdown structure okay tell them what you are expecting to have because what i sometimes see that the client will not approve the baseline six months after the project start 
Don't tell me it is only the subcontractor fault or the contractor fault. It is also your fault, Mr. Client. So the first thing you need to do is to guide your subcontractor or contractor planning engineers for the planning requirements. Explain to them very well what you are expecting to have, okay? Then you will review their time schedule. Then you will review their uh, weekly report, monthly report. You will review their claims if there are any claims. So these are the main tasks in terms of uh, contractors. However, you as a client you still need to report to your management. You need to report to your uh, uh, maybe project manager. So you have two things. You need to be sure that the baseline is dead in a proper way and everything looks fine. Then you get this data, put it in a proper format and give it to your management. Okay, we have here uh, a question for procurement activities in Promovera. What should we do if submitter rejection, if submittal rejected? And we already get it 100%. Should we make submittal percent zero and reduce overall progress of the project? This is very nice question. Actually, sums up. Okay, so we have procurement activity like material submittal material approval, material procurement, and material delivery to the site. I usually put a, a, a ground rule, a ground rule to my colleagues working with me, okay? Whenever the material is submitted, I give it only 50%, okay? And I don't increase this 50% to 100% even if they submitted it 100 times, I don't care. I only change the 50% to 100% whenever we get the approval. So whenever we get the approval, this will be the date we put 100% for the submittal, okay? And uh, in the approval, from the date they submit it to the date they approve it, this will be the duration for the approval. So in my opinion, don't put it 100% unless you get it approved. Mr. Khalid Salah, how can uh, submit full detail disruption claim due to change work sequence by owner? Okay, very simple. The claim is like a legal case, okay? So in any legal case, you need to find the event, okay? You need to prove that this event affected your work, then you need to analyze this event to calculate how many days it was impacted. So if you have a, a, a disruption, okay, you need to prove, I assume it is not suspension because suspension will completely stop the work, okay, until you do a, 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 a resume again. So this is the suspension period. Now we are talking about disruption only, it means they might put some small areas on hold. They might tell you, wait, do this first, do that first. So mainly you need to prove that this disruption affected your productivity. As you, if you can prove this one, you have no issues at all. You are good to go and you are good to submit your claim. How to prove that this disruption uh, affected your work? This is your job now. You can coordinate with your project manager, construction manager, site engineers, what is the uh, contractual uh, letters you have sent, what was your uh, warning letters, or maybe raising a potential claim letters, what is the official correspondences, and so on. Okay. Mr. Abdul Qadir. How much Excel we should learn to become a smart planning engineer? I learn it conditional formatting, power pivot, uh, pivot tables, and power query. What else in Excel I should focus to fully utilize it? In my opinion, you are doing great by choosing these things, okay? Now you need to master it before asking for something else. Try to find out how to do uh, 
better reports using pivot tables, how to minimize your work using the Power Query, how to use conditional format to auto color your uh, reports. Try to master them because this, I don't, I don't have nothing in mind now except the macros to be added to this uh, list. And the macros will uh, uh, shorten the duration of any task if you would like, if you are doing a task, okay? You are doing filter, then go to the cell, copy from here, then go to the other cell, paste it here, then do one, two, four, four, five, five, six. Then you can record this macro, whether by uh, recording in the Excel or by typing some codes, and it will be repeated for you. But for, for now, my advice is to master what you have now, what you have started. Master it, try to practice. And by the way, try to do the same thing by two ways, Yanni. Try to do one report using Power Query and try to do the same report using the pivot tables and see what challenges you could face and how to solve them. It will help you a lot. Okay, we have a question, how to apply for jobs in planning engineers after two years gap because of COVID, I'm unable to join company. Earlier, I used to work as a planning engineer. Actually, the, I don't see a problem to have one or two years gap uh, in your career. Uh, simply uh, train yourself, uh, be ready for the interview, uh, have uh, uh, some training, uh, uh, if you have some free time, try to do one project from scratch and do the reports and try to bring some samples to the interview. Whenever you are called for an interview, try to have some samples of your previous work. And please, if you have any confidential data from the previous projects, just uh, delete them. Tell them what you are capable of doing. Try to learn something new, new techniques. Simply, you need to be in a better position in the market in order to be uh, chosen as a planning engineer. I we have here, hello, good day, good day. Uh, okay, again, Mr. Zakaria, please, uh, this is the English channel. If you have uh, Arabic question, please go to the Arabic channel. Okay, how to eliminate or remove the negative one total float in the baseline program? Okay, this is very nice question and this is very common. I got crazy one day because of this one, but I knew the, the problem. What was the problem? Okay. The problem in the hours, okay? You need to show the hours and then you be sure that the hours is okay. Let me, actually, let me share my screen. And let me open one schedule here for you. Uh, okay. See. Okay, from user preferences. Okay user preferences in the uh, time we need to make the hours let's say you are going to show the 24 hours okay from here once you show the hours you will have here okay in the and if you go to the enterprise projects and you selected the project where it was this one which one i think this one okay you see the must finish by or finish, must finish by, this is what, what caused our total float, okay? It will give you the hour also. So you need to fix this one and check that the finish is uh, matching with the must finish by. Once you fix both of these two things, then the minus one uh, uh, total float will disappear. And by the way, when uh, once you... Let me show it to you. Okay, let me give it like this. Okay. Once you show this one, 
you need also to show the duration okay and show it in decimal let me where it was uh, here unit of time sh show the decimal let's say two then you can see this one it will not be one it will be 0 0.5 0 0.2 and the duration also you can see now we will see here 10.5 10.2 now we need to play with this one and fix them and this will solve your problem if you couldn't do it okay if you, for any reason you cannot solve it send me an email to info at planning engineer.net i'll try to tell you how to do it exactly okay we have another question can we use multiple p6 update along two to three years for claims to client for it for eot can we use multiple p6 updated along two to three years i don't know it is it depend on your fragment if you have uh, events and something having two years three years you are welcome to uh, use it i don't see any problem why we cannot do this i think this uh, question was repeated we answered it already we have here a question. I have a question regarding duration, how to de determine duration. Okay, the, the best thing is to calculate duration based on the quantities and the available work man force. But usually we have a limited time, okay? We need to finish the project on certain time. And accordingly, you go and say, okay, I have to finish the substructure on this duration. I have to finish the superstructure in this duration. I have to finish the rough finishes in this duration. I have to finish the final finishes in this duration. So now we minimize the overall duration into four stages. Then you go to the uh, substructure, for example. Okay, I have the substructure, the whole substructure should be completed in, let's say, three months. What the activities I have? I have excavation, I have plain concrete, I have reinforcing concrete, then I have some uh, waterproofing. So you need now to make a percentage for each activity based on the expected effort and put this percentage, okay, and uh, uh, multiply by the available time, then you will get the duration. Now you might have some duration, you need to increase it more, okay? Uh, uh, and you have less duration as an overall in substructure. In that case, you might do some overlapping. So you start one activity, uh, maybe start to start with some lag, and instead of having activity finish to start. We have a question. I was assistant engineer planning for two years and engineer planning for a year, but I did not get a chance to work on schedule with any software. With any software? So how you was how you was uh, working as a planning engineer? Uh, you are uh, uh, you need to enhance yourself, even if you are not an engineer. I see some people. They are smart uh, people. They are doing the planning engineer job. And they are not engineers, but they know how to do it. You simply need to learn how to do it. If you can do this one, if you can learn how to do it, it will be very nice. Okay, sir, post your lesson in Udemy, please. I have already one course in Udemy. It is published there, uh, and you are welcome to take it. But the other courses will be on my website. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you need some help, some push from my side, don't hesitate to send me an email and we can uh, uh, arrange this one. So don't worry. Uh, Mr. Faisal, alaikum salam. Oh, I have. I, okay. Mr. Ahmed, can you send me your CV? Please, Mr. Ahmed, send me an email, info at planningengineer.net. I'll be happy to send it to you. Again, my email here. So if you can type it down, this is my email. Whoever would like to ask a question or need something from me, send me an email to this email. I'll be happy to help. 
Okay, now I think I I lost where I was in the comments, but I think we can get it here. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have any course about cost control? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, go to planningengineer.net. You will find my course for the cost control. A planning engineer in cement industry versus planning engineer in construction industry. Okay. This is a very nice question, by the way. Cement industry, what it is? It is not a project. It is an operation. So we do planning for construction and we do planning for operation. However, you have to learn something new in the operation, okay, if you are working only on the construction. But for me, I prefer and I believe the uh, planning in construction is better uh, for me, for Hani. Maybe you like more to have uh, planning for operation. It is your uh, choice. Mr. Abdul Majid, EVM, SPI, CPI. Okay, I don't know uh, what you mean. If you would like to uh, elaborate, then I can understand. I am a quantity surveyor, just want to polish my skills. To polish your skills in the quantity surveying or in the planning? I started my career as a quantity surveyor. I started my career actually as a site engineer, then a quantity surveyor. So you have to decide because quantity surveyor also is a very good uh, uh, career. Uh, what you, career you like better, which route you like better, it's up to you. You have the quantity surveying, you have the planning, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, my question is how to improve technical skills in planning, uh, current standard, and gain career growth. Simply learn, learn, learn. <laughs> learn something new every day. Uh, take some useful courses. Uh, this is how I can advise you how to enhance your career as a planner. Simply. There are some of us who don't know Arabic. English is covering more ground. Yes, yes, you are correct. And uh, the problem here is that there are some Arabs who don't know English. That's why I made for them, because I love them too much. I made for them an Arabic channel. I think this is a reply for why not in Arabic. Hi, Mr. Hani. How shall make a revised schedule of a project? Thanks a lot. Okay. There are theoretical things to say about this one, but actually I am uh, planning to prepare just a course for this one. It will be a short course. What techniques? I, I still am thinking of it, and it took from me a lot of effort, by the way, to, for, to find the best way. What techniques we can use, how we can make it easier to make revise and recovery, both. So uh, uh, let me finish this one first. Maybe I have something you like, then we can uh, share this information. Mr. Arij, I'm from Philippines, sir. Thank you for sharing your expertise and knowledge. We really appreciate your video. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too. I have too many friends from Philippines. They are great people. They are smart. They are dedicated to their work. Actually, I like what you are doing, guys. Can you say about working program, Mr. Marcus? What I can say about working program? Actually, uh, I could uh, categorize uh, uh, programs into the following. Let's say uh, tender schedule. Okay, this is a, a very high level summary we are submitting during the tender. We are not yet ordered the project, okay? We don't know whether we are going to execute the project or not, but the client need to know, okay, Mr. Contractor, how likely you are going to execute this project? So this is a tender project. 
immediately and usually it is within 7 to 14 days after awarding the project now we are uh, uh, submitting or we should submit the master time schedule master time schedule it will be more detailed than the tender but it will be in overall a summary schedule showing the zones the areas how we are planning to do this one then it is usually within uh, uh, let's say from 14 to one and a half month we should submit a detailed time schedule cost and resource loading so these are the three types of the schedule i can think of uh, uh, this i don't know what is working program maybe uh, you have a very important activity in your uh, site, so you can do a small schedule for it, maybe. What is a checklist for perfect schedule? Okay, I advise you to check the course I did for this one. Uh, it will be very useful to you. Hello, sir. How to correct baseline schedule if all days are not according to our updated schedule and we have additional WBS and additional activities? Kindly let me know. Simply, Mr. Muhammad, you need to do a revised schedule. You need to get your baseline, adding whatever new activities, uh, fixing the sequence of four, doing whatever it requires. Then you will have your baseline. Okay, how can I expect the delay will happen based on my schedule P6? I mean, I want to raise the red flag that if we don't do this step, so we're going to face a delay in the project. This is a very nice question. Okay. One of the main tasks for a planning engineer is to raise the flag. Say, hello, we are having a potential delay here. If we didn't do this procurement, if we don't have this material on site, if we don't have this activity executed. So how to do it? Simply, after you do the update, you check the critical path activity, the near critical path activity. What is the near critical path activity? These activities with total float less than, let's say, five to seven days, or seven days, let's say seven days. It means if this activity not started, by the next week, it will record delays. And you start analyzing whatever you have, start asking your team, what is the most important activities we have? They will tell you, okay, the steel, the steel work is very important. Then you go to your schedule. How many two days float I have for this steel work? Oh, I have five days. Then I can raise the flag. If we didn't start the steel work by this week, we will have a problem by the next week. Okay, how can one have uh, a variation control template? Uh, I, my opinion, I don't believe in one size fits all. One size fits all equal to templates. I never have a template. Every case, every project, I start from scratch. Of course, I can copy some pages from here and there, but the, the definition of the project is it is a unique thing. It will never happen again. It never happened before because each project had its own environment, its own, uh, uh, let's say, uh, contractual issues, uh, stakeholders, uh, dates, uh, durations. It is very hard to find two typical projects, although on paper, you might have the same duration, same budget, blah, 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 but you will never have the same situation in every project. So it is better to have a project, uh, 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 any, the correct method in your head, and you do it for every project according to the situation you have. Mr. Muhammad, is there any sample project like a real project to prepare daily, weekly, monthly report and dashboard, scale, etc., to practice our planning knowledge before jo before joining any company? Yes, sure. What we did, we created 
uh, uh, I send an email asking, uh, come on, planning engineers, to my people who are joining my email list. If you have some sample reports, please share with us. Okay. And what happened is they shared a lot of uh, uh, documents, actually. And I add it in my website. I'll, I'll tell you how to find it right now. Okay. So this is the website. Simply you will go to the blog. This is planningengineer.net. Okay. Simply go to the blog. Okay, you go down here. It is sample weekly and monthly report. Click on this one. Okay, and you need to click on this link. You will be able to download 36 weekly and monthly report sample, 23 dashboard progress tracking template, seven daily report samples. Thanks for whoever shared with us this one. This is not done by me, it is done by our amazing planning engineers. So you are welcome to get it. And this is a direct link for the uh, uh, page if you'd like to go to it directly. Okay, how to correct baseline schedule when we have updated dates and additional activity? I think we, okay, we uh, replied this one. Okay. I study data analysis. I think maybe it can be helpful as a planning engineer. Yes, of course. Uh, one of the main tasks of the planning engineer is to analyze the data. He or she should be able to read the numbers and convert these numbers to actions. Okay, it means that uh, data analysis is very important. Is there any sample project? I think this one was repeated. Uh, Mr. Basit Ahmed, hello, hope you are doing great. Thank you very much. Can you repeat from beginning problem about the negative total float? I don't think so. <laughs> but uh, the good thing is this session is live and it will be recorded so you can come back and see it in the uh, whenever you have some time. I submitted the revised schedule to client, but the MSB schedule, Microsoft project schedule, the total slack, total slack, it means the float is more than 10% of the project schedule after updating the schedule. First of all, why are you are using MS project? Use Promovera, it is much better than Microsoft project in scheduling. Uh, and in this case, maybe you need to add some more relationships in your uh, schedule or you need to uh, uh, revisit the logic maybe you have something not correct in the logic okay can you give some idea how claim work from start to finish rule of planning engineer on claims Okay, Mr. Praveen, this is very nice question, but it is it took me around six hours in one course to tell you how to do this one. So you are welcome to go to planningengineer.net and find the course. And again, I'm repeating, repeating, repeating. Don't let the course to be any barrier of you. If you have any problem with the course, just send me an email telling me, honey, I cannot pay the full amount or I cannot pay at all, and you are welcome. How to revise the schedule P6 to make plan percentage and actual percentage equal? <laughs> this is a very nice question. I'm working on this one. I have the manual way, okay? I, uh, I Till this moment, I'm doing it the hard way, the manual way, okay? But I'm trying to find a smart solution for it. To be honest, not yet. I, uh, I figured out how to do it in a smart way, but I'm trying. Once I did it, I will spread it and tell everyone how to do it. In which field, both actual percentage mean duration, percentage activity, percentage, or other field percentage available? Actual percentage, duration, or activity? 
Okay, activity percentage complete will update everything for you. And when we are doing import and export, we are using the activity percentage complete. Mr. Ahmed, salamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. Mr. Maxwell, please, how do I use P6 to generate weightage for activities and compare actual to plan to generate a scale? Thanks. Okay, Mr. Maxwell, Primavera will not make a weight for you. It is better to do the weight in uh, Excel uh, based on the based on the course or based on the hours. This is the two recommended methods. However, if you don't have this option and you cannot do it, you can use Primavera and take make a global change. Okay, make. Uh, by import, export, global change, whatever you want, you can take the duration and put it as a resource. So let's say that you have, uh, you will add a new resource and just call it weight and make this budgeted units of this resource equal to the activity duration. Okay. Then you can have the units percentage complete. How to, Mr. Basit Ahmed, how to calculate per day manpower in Primavera if I have input the total quantity of material required? So what is the relationship between the manpower and material? Okay, this is the very thing. Okay, but manpower, we usually, we put the budgeted manpower, budgeted man hours, then we can export this one uh, or show the... Uh, resources per week per day per month whatever we want we can do it easily in promovera if i don't uh, 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 answer your question correctly this is how i understood it please let me know again we have a question for interview question for project planner as i told you there is one nice planning engineer guide let me show it to you how to find it? Actually, it will be a good idea since uh, too many people is asking. This is planning engineer, okay? This is our website. You can go here for the blog. And you can search here for interview. Interview questions. Okay, you will find a funny person. This one, you go to planning engineer interview guide, 90 questions and model answer, you go for it. This is a direct link if you'd like to have it. Then you go here and just click download. That's it. Okay, I hope it is useful for you. Let me show it to you, no worries. Here it is. This is how it looks like. Just loading, yeah. You have here the question and what is the answer. You have here the question and the answer. You have some graphs also. I think it will be useful for you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hazim, is 4D and 5D planning really required in big companies? Uh, as of my information, not yet. This technology is not yet uh, visible in the planning. It is great in the architectural because they are doing 3D, they are doing some coordination, avoiding conflict. But as of my information, okay, uh, it is not yet uh, visible for the planning. Maybe some new technology came. I don't. I'm not aware of it yet. But from time to time, I go to check what is the new, what is new in 4D and 5D in the planning. I don't, don't find it interesting yet for me. Okay, uh, it is hard to find 
job for fresh planning engineer. Yes, I do agree with you. It is hard, but not impossible. Still possible. <laughs> Try your best. By the way, again, 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 let me share to you. Okay. Here we have one section for jobs. We get we make it free of charge for you. In this section, we collect, we are not uh, telling that we get the jobs uh, or we post them. We are collecting them. Whoever is posting a job for a planning engineer in this country, planning engineer in this country, we put it here. So you can go to any job, okay, and click apply, and your resume will go directly to this job poster. However, you need first to do a resume. We review it and we'll approve it. Then you'll be able to apply for the job. You can also go for planningengineer.net, then go to the jobs section. I hope this one will help you. Okay. Uh, sir, when you will start claim and contract and delay analysis course in Udemy? Why Udemy? Uh, okay, I have one course on my website already, uh, but I'm not planning to put more courses on Udemy. Uh, you are welcome to take it from my uh, my website. Uh, if you have some good reason why Udemy, just let me know. Okay. Don't be afraid. To manager, client, super, you will become a successful scheduler. Okay, I agree with you. Don't be afraid, but don't be also rude. <laughs> you need to be cooperative. You need to, and I still saying the planning engineer should have a very good relationship with everyone in the project. This is, I'm still saying. Okay. Uh... I think we still have too many comments, but uh, now we almost one hour, so I'm trying to now skip some comments and find uh, what is uh, could be more interesting. Okay, what is the correct procedure for scheduling? Okay, uh, there is no correct and wrong. There is, you need first of all to understand the concept of the planning. Okay, then in order to do a baseline, you need to study the project bill of quantity, study the project drawings, then start doing some investigation with the site people, ask the project manager, construction manager, the people who are going to execute the work, what is your strategy? Maybe you can consult your client also. Do you have any special requirements in your schedule? Then you start doing the post and the resource loading activity list. Then you do the WBS and you uh, both the activities of WBS, do the relationships, uh, both the duration, uh, load costs and the resources. And that's it. Uh, uh, trying to do some leveling, okay, resource leveling whether in cash or resources. So I think these are the steps that could be uh, uh, doing it. We explain this one in our course also. You are welcome to, to check it. Uh, but you need to practice. You need to do it by yourself. Uh, my request, please share any P6 project baseline. Very thankful. OK, uh, just send me an email because I cannot put this project on public, okay? Because they have some information, so I cannot put in public. But whoever would like to have a sample project in P6, baseline, again, here is my email. Send me an email, I'll be happy to answer you and send you the project samples. I think we will stop at this point. Uh, we already one hour past. I was very happy with your questions. And if you would like to, uh, uh, if you'd like me to do more sessions like this, please let me know, uh, subscribe in your favorite channel. So you will get notification whenever I am uh, planning to go uh, live. Thank you very much. See you in the next live.